Hello again. In the last video, I talked about the value of working through a Bible study lesson, feeding yourself from the Word of God. After you have finished working through the lesson for yourself, the next step is to review the lesson to make your plan for leading the discussion. Remember, you are the content guardian, and one of your goals is to help others learn to feed themselves too. Here's what you will learn in this video. How to review a lesson to make your plan, what to consider as you make your plan, and what a plan looks like. Are you ready? Step number one, ask Jesus to help you make a plan. Like everything else we've talked about, the best place to start is asking Jesus to help you make a plan. It's okay to make a plan. Just hand it to him and give him permission to change it. He will guide you through the Holy Spirit living inside you. And as you open yourself to the Spirit's leading, what you learn in your personal study time will be valuable to your group as you lead them through the discussion. Jesus will show you what the overall focus of your group discussion time should be, especially as you get to know the group members better. Remember, it's good to say, Lord Jesus, I can't do this on my own. I will trust you to do this through me. Then watch what he does. Step number two, consider the time allowed. Consider how long your group gets to meet and how much of the lesson you can cover. If you have a couple of hours, you can usually cover the whole lesson with time for creative discussion of the questions. If you only have an hour or less, though, choose which questions you want to discuss as a group, or you will feel rushed trying to get through all of them, and that's not good. If skipping questions bothers you, I mentioned earlier the option of dividing the lesson into two sessions. Regardless of how much time you have, stay focused on what you decide is best for the group. Remember, you are the content guardian. Step number three, mark the Bible passages to read. Regardless of how long your group gets to meet, always read the main Bible passages that are the focus of the lesson. Guide your group into the living, transforming Word of God by opening and reading the Bible together. If you skip reading Bible passages, and just discuss the questions, then you will be spending your time on man's word or woman's word rather than on God's revealed word and your response to that. Also, don't assume that everyone has already read the Bible passages before coming to the group. It is better to skip questions and read the Bible passages than the other way around. Wise Preparation plans to read the important Bible verses for the lesson. So mark the ones you're going to read. Step number four, mark how to cover the questions. Mark the questions you will cover as written. Don't just pick the application questions, thinking they are the most important. Pick questions related to the Bible passages being covered so that you can make sure your group members understand the truth revealed in the Bible before they try to apply it in their lives. So put a check mark on those you will cover as written. Then mark any questions that could be combined together into one general discussion. Combine questions on a similar topic by asking, what did you learn about that topic? A few of the Joyful Walk Bible studies have a small group discussion guide in the back of the book. Other studies may have this as well. These may have some questions already combined for you. Consider using those. Mark any questions that could be skipped without affecting the discussion. It's okay to skip some questions. Try not to skip too many observation questions, though. These are the most important part of Bible study, learning to see what is actually in the text. You want to make sure the group members are seeing this and basing their answers on what is in God's Word, not something they have heard before and not something they're imagining to be there. You want to avoid that look, imagine, see way of looking at the Bible. I shared that with you already twice. It is an important caution to keep in mind. If you have a very limited discussion time each week, you can pre-select the questions you will cover and let the group members know ahead of time. This can help prevent some from being disappointed when their favorite question isn't being discussed. This works for busy people, too. You can also do this for a group where everyone is new to the Bible. Choose which questions they should do and which they should skip just to get started learning how to do Bible study. Mark questions you will combine or skip. Mark anything that might be confusing or lead to extra discussion not related to the lesson. For the confusing questions, give your group permission to contact you through the week if they don't understand what a question is asking. 
or let them know about a question ahead of time if you've seen it. And you may have heard unrelated discussions called rabbit trails. They take you in a direction away from the focus of your lesson. Now, good discussions should stimulate additional questions and comments, and people like to follow rabbit trails. As the content guardian, you have to keep the group focused on what they need to learn from the lesson. So write yourself a watch out for this note in the margin of the lesson. Step number five, plan for the application questions. Decide how you will cover the application questions in the lesson. In Joyful Walk Bible Studies, the application questions are easily identified by focus phrase after the question number. In this example, the focus phrase, Your Life's Journey, marks the application questions in the Everyday Women, Ever Faithful God study. Find the application questions in your study. Now, some of these questions are better for the whole group to discuss together. Some questions are too personal, so they should be skipped. Some applications are great for smaller groups of two to four. Could a smaller group of people share their answers by just turning their chairs together? I call this table talk, whether we have tables or not. I use this especially when I'm leading a group bigger than six or eight. Caution here, though. Don't break up into smaller groups unless you know the group members well enough to be confident in the kind of biblical advice they might be sharing. It's better to stay in a larger group than to have to undo some bad teaching shared in a smaller group. I like to ask someone I know and whose biblical understanding I can trust to be the table leader for my smaller table talk groups. We'll talk about this more later. So plan for the application questions. Step number six, decide on extra questions. Mark optional deeper discoveries questions or extra research questions that you will include. And you want to include them because they will add to your discussion. So mark those. Write other questions that you gained from your own study. Good follow-up questions, additional insights. I usually write these in the margin of my book and draw a circle around them to catch my eye. And I put a star on my plan. Now that you have reviewed the lesson, step number seven is to make a simple plan for covering the questions. Now, when I'm talking about making a plan, I'm talking about simple, written on scrap paper, small enough to fit in your study guide and follow along as you lead the lesson. Nothing fancy, doesn't have to be typed out, just simple. If you have a tendency to forget details, note those on your written plan. Your plan should include these things. The time you will start the organized discussion. A reminder to pray before the lesson begins. The question numbers that you will cover, combine, or skip. The Bible verses you will read during the discussion, whether it's part of them or all of them. How you will handle the application questions and extra research questions. Any follow-up questions from your own study. And the time you will finish the lesson and end with prayer. Whether you have 45 minutes or two hours, it's okay to stay focused on what you decide is best, under Jesus' guidance, of course. All of this is part of preparing wisely as the content guardian for your group. Now, all of this information is on the lesson leading checklist in your course workbook. So you have that at your fingertips. You can pull it out and use that as you're working through a lesson. Here is what you've learned in this whole section. You learned how to prepare wisely by learning from the study for yourself first. You learned how to prepare wisely by reviewing the lesson to make a simple plan. You learned what a wise plan looks like, and you have a checklist that you can use. Now you get to put into practice what you just learned. Find two things in your workbook. First, the lesson leading checklist. The second thing is the sample lesson leading plan. Review the lesson leading checklist, then use the sample lesson leading plan to read through a Bible study lesson and see a sample plan for leading it. Be sure to add your own notes. When you're finished, go to section four, where I will demonstrate how to follow this plan. See you there.